Hey guys, this is System, and this is Ignomatica 9 Expert Mode. Overall, having a wonderful day. I'm having a fantastic one. So let's check out this pack and uh, give it a go, right? So brand new pack, brand new pack smell. Pretty excited to play it. Uh, this pack's been out for a few weeks, just making sure it got updated a few times. I did have plans to play it from the get-go, but I wanted to make sure it was flushed out. And I think it's pretty flushed out now, so we're gonna try it. And it's gonna be a long play, right? So I may end up playing some other packs kind of in between, but this one will be going for quite a long time because it is an expert pack and there's a lot to it. So yeah, pretty excited. So there is a quest book here. So we have this one here. I already clicked off these ones. These are just the getting started one. So we got a welcome quest here. One where we got the modded for dummies book. These ones here just explain the quest. This one here, apparently there's a new mod for the Akashic Tome. Now I guess it's like the Akashic Tome. Probably a new dev just took it over or something, but the full eccentric tome. And uh, it has all the books for the mod pack in it. So once we get a book, we'll have access to all those, which is pretty fantastic all around. Now the quests are broken up into different varieties, I guess. You have these discovery ones, right? So these ones have like different bits and bobs that you have access to. Then you have the learning ones down here. The learning ones are gonna show you how to get to, get through, I guess, each individual mod, right? A lot of stuff has been disabled in this pack, right? So uh, one of the big mods that you do early on, say for instance, Ars Nouveau, there's like all the source production, I think for one or two of them is disabled. So they kind of like set your path on a lot of things. They want to keep the start of the pack really magic -y, which was the idea. So a lot of things, and some other things have been renamed, I noticed as well, with like, um, uh, what mod there? The one I noted was Thermal. They renamed some of the machines to give it more of a magic feel, which is pretty cool. We start off in Twilight Force as well. So we're in the Twilight Force, which is uh, something to be aware of there. I'm gonna read off the first quest of the expert line too. You only have access to chapter one. Later on, I think there's more chapters, but we'll worry about that when we get there. And uh, check this out here. So the Naga Trophy. Um, Strange at one time, this fen was kept by the Wilden Grove, a circle of druids sworn to preserve and watch over the surrounding wildlands, yet no sign remains of creatures such as the Naga now terrorize the lands. With its defeat, the fey that called this place home will undoubtedly show their gratitude, right? And a uh, cool thing to note down here is that the Twilight Forest progression system is disabled for E9 which is amazing because usually you're really limited to which biomes you go into. You know what I mean? You're really locked down. Sometimes there's like a wall of flies over a biome. You got to kill a certain boss to be able to get there. We're not locked down like that at all. And we can just progress uh, through the pack as we as we see fit, right? So if we want to do a later boss, we can. Uh, I think you have to do some of them in order. I know you need to do this one. This one's going to give us uh, something to progress through the mod pack. And this one down here, we're probably going to do today. This is going to be the Lich. If you kill the Lich, you actually get the spell book from Ars Nouveau. And it actually has a spell, the Fell spell, so we can cut down trees and don't have to with an axe. So let's go ahead and jump into it here. We're just going to go ahead and punch down one more tree. I've already done one. This is the second one here. I think I actually have an oak tree around here too. And they're a little rare, but you can find them. You can find the oak and the birch. And they drop a whole bunch of apples. So I'm going to try to get one of those saplings as well before we move forward here. When you start off, you have yourself a full set of leather armor. You have a bow, which is uh, pretty awesome as well. And a whole bunch of arrows there. Also this here, this quiver is amazing. It's from supplementary. So you just right click all the arrows on it like thus, free up a whole bunch of inventory, then throw it into your back slot, which is pretty cool. I think it's V key. Yeah, V then scroll wheel. And then you could just uh, shoot your arrows at will, which is cool. I think this one here, right beside where I spawned. Yeah, this one was an oak tree. And these uh, drop a whole bunch of apples, like ridiculous amount of apples in this pack. I don't think that's a vanilla thing. Is that a 119 thing? I don't think so. <laughs> I just think uh, this just drops a whole bunch of apples for no apparent reason. But uh, we'll take it either way because it's easy food, right? Yeah, look at that. Just, uh, I guess, a festival of apples right there. There you go. So let's head over here. I saw there was an exposed cobblestone. With that, we could actually get our first set of tools. Uh, we don't have FTB alt mine in the pack, so not at all. I believe there's a way of getting alt mine through a enchantment, and then I guess there'll probably be some tools that could do stuff like that as well. But uh, yeah, we could also get ourselves, I believe, a hammer, which will at least get us uh, three by three mining. And uh, with this cobblestone, we could do that. So there you go. I think we need seven cobblestones. So once we have seven, we're pretty much ready to go. And once we have a set of tools here, we'll go ahead and fight the Naga right away, and then kind of work from there. Right there you go. Sweet, and one more, just give me that puppy. Sweet. So to make the heads pretty easy, just do that. Maybe that right there, there you go. Then we just go ahead and actually make a actual stone hammer. Let's get some uh, proactive sticks here too, because we're gonna need a decent amount of those. That's cool. And then we should be able to just hammer that up, no problem at all whatsoever. 
There you go. So we got to start here. We got to start. Probably don't need the mossy cobble at this point. Might just throw that away because we only have limited storage. Uh, we have, uh, I noticed on our map too, but there's like a, a hedge maze. We're gonna go ahead and chuck that out probably before the ledge. Oh, we got an apotheosis boss down here too. So sometimes there's little like caves down underground where the apotheosis bosses can spawn. So yeah, we definitely have apotheosis bosses uh, in the world. And if you're in a dark area, I think they'll spawn in anyway, right? So be a little careful. We are twilight. It's not completely dark. I actually am using a mod to up the darkness a little bit just so I can record the video because otherwise it's going to be very hard to see. It's very hard on the encoders for, um, I guess, uh, video making software. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab that. But I'll only probably use that for the first video until we have some lighting, right? Let's grab ourselves a axe, a pickaxe. Let's grab ourselves a shovel. Sweet. And then we'll grab ourselves a sword as well. And that should be our first set of tools there. Looks pretty good to me. Sweet and sweet, right? Awesome. So let's go ahead and look at our map here, right? So the backpack we have here, I guess this is the one from uh, Sophisticated. So we have good upgradable backpack. Be able to make that bigger later on, right? We don't need you at all. Let's get rid of you. There you go. And then we have this map as well. So this map here, this is the one from Twilight Forest. If you go to, I guess, recipe on it, you could actually make it pretty easy. So it's not too bad. But you just use it and then look at it. You know, things specific to the Twilight Forest, right? So those little kind of domes there are mounds um, where you can actually mine up large amounts of ores and such. And uh, there's spawners and chests down there too. So a good place to loot. I'll probably live in one of those early on. I'll probably try to find one of the really big ones. We didn't have a big one on the map there. I'll have to do a little bit of exploring, but the big ones are pretty amazing um, just because you have a lot of space, lots of ores. And um, yeah, you get some loot from the chest as well, right? So not too bad at all. All of our early clay will probably be coming from little rivers like this. I'm not going to worry about this second, but something I will have to think about at some point. This will be the Naga area right here, right? So I do this from this map. So I have this map here. Just hit M, right? I can see a whole bunch of the structures. We can see a lot further. I also boosted it up to uh, 32 chunks when I first came in. I guess my view distance. Just so I can see what was in the area and kind of play other things out. Anyway, this is the Naga here. Should not be too bad. We have some good food as well. Could I have my good food? Oh, I didn't actually grab my quest today. Let's go ahead and grab this one. There you go. I had to restart the pack. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and grab that. And uh, we'll shoot the Naga. Hopefully, you got to come this way. Sweet. Go ahead and uh, get rid of this thing. Yeah, those good foods that you get from the quest lines are actually pretty sweet. So keep them around and use them for the boss fights. And try to use the other foods, uh, you know, when you don't need it as much. But as you shoot this guy, he'll get shorter and shorter. Like, bits of his butt fall off. He makes that rattle sound and he charges. And uh, you try to get out of the way. Also, if he's, like, behind one of those walls, you usually go over it. So, sometimes you can just run close to one of those walls if you want to get away, away from him as well. But anyway, once we kill him, a chest will spawn in the center. He's probably going to hit me here. Yeah, doesn't matter too much. <laughs> he's pretty simple. No. No. Hey. There we go. So there you go. That's our chest there. And inside, we got ourselves some loot here. Got ourselves some Nega Scales. We actually didn't get many of those, but that's okay. One of these trophies here. These are going to have stats on them too. So this one has armor and max health, which is actually pretty good. Because this one only has one armor. And this thing's unbreakable, so I'm going to wear it. And now we look like him. So I guess that's a thing. We also got this pouch here. So the Druid's pouch has a whole bunch of saplings and seeds and stuff that we need to progress. So we have that. And did I not grab my crafting table? I did. Let's go ahead and grab that real quick. Because we can actually make one armor upgrade here. So with this, we can actually make ourselves a pair of pantaloons, right? Let's get ourselves a pants. Go ahead and put them on. And these have protection three on them. If we had more, you could also make a uh, chest plate as well. But it has fire protection three, which I'm not really worried about. But the arbor is, I'm uh, uh, sorry, the protection is actually pretty decent. Uh, so this shader, don't need it. It's from uh, Mercer Vigidaric. It's if you want to recolor some of the tools. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, figure out where we're going to go next. Now that we have the Naga done, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of this Naga stone. But I'm trying to get the same kinds that kind of stack here. So all these ones that kind of connect. I just know they could be used early on to do some crafting uh, with the mortar and pestle. And that's going to be our early way of processing materials. So I just want to get a little bit of it. You use andesite as well, which is uh, fine and dandy. But andesite is not plentiful in the world at all. You can't craft it with diorite. And uh, I think it was cobblestone, actually. But uh, I can just grab it right here, right? So I can just go ahead and grab some of this, make ourselves several pedestals, and then we'll be able to process our materials when we get to that point, right? So that's good there. Probably go ahead and throw away this stuff too. Let's just get rid of it. There you go. You and you. That's fantastic. 
Now let's take a look at our map here. So first thing I think I'm going to do is go ahead and head down to this hedge mage. I know in these hedge mages, uh, you have a good chance of finding backpacks and they're bigger ones. I think they're the iron backpacks and iron's really expensive at the start of this pack. Meaning if I find an iron backpack, the iron level, I'll be able to upgrade it to gold in future much easier. So I want to go ahead and check that out. There's a bunch of chests in there too. And I can find a good store, a uh, good sword. These druid houses too, they have chests in them. So they're good loot. But once I do that, I'm going to go over and fight this lich. So let's go to the hedge maze and hedge maze. And then, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, move forward from there. So I decided to throw myself down a hole here and uh, grab some more stone really quick. Just break the rest of this hammer for all that matters. There you go. And then we'll go ahead and head into the maze there right beside Ashley. But I want to make sure we had a good amount of this uh, cobblestone so we can get around. Because it is uh, easier to pillar over the walls a lot of time than it is to uh, actually go through... The actual maze itself, right? Because uh, if you actually stand on top of the walls too, so on top of the walls of this maze, you actually take damage. So anyway, hopefully you find a backpack. If not, I'd like to find a sword as well. A sword would be nice because you can get swords out of these. I actually found an axe in my test world that was like 17 damage or something crazy. So yeah, sometimes you can find really good tools and weapons. But anyway, here we go. We actually have an area here. The spawners do don't actually spawn anything that horrible. I think the... Uh, all the items spawn, like, generate when you open these up, too, right? So that's how that works there. But the mobs that spawn on these are, like, little spiders. They're not even that hard. Like, look at that. Nine armor, body armor. That's awesome right there. So, yeah, you can find really good stuff in here, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I'm hoping for a backpack, though. What do we got here? We got one there. got one there. I'm going to take the damage. There you go. Then we'll just run around. <laughs> go. Oh, we got a backpack. Awesome. That's really what I wanted there. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Grab that, and then drop off a bunch of this stuff really quickly. There you go. And then probably deal with this duber. There you go. And grab what's left. Now, is that enchanted? It is. You can also get bows as well, right? So that one has arrow velocity and speed. So definitely worth checking for this stuff, right? Oh, got another one right here. And another backpack. That's awesome, actually. So now we have no problem with storage at all whatsoever, which is uh, exactly what I was going for. You can break these spawners, too. But uh, actually, I might show you that. Very bad things can happen when you break spawners. It actually opens up a portal, and then you have to fight, like, waves of mobs. And I think they're custom to the pack as well. So the first wave isn't too bad, then the second wave gets really bad very quickly. Anyway, any more spiders? Nope. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, head up here. Oh, we've got one right there. I want to go up a little higher and just make sure we know where the rest are. So I got that one, I got that one, I got that one. Got this one. I think there's usually five areas. Yeah, this will be the last one here. So yeah, not too bad. I mean, I'm okay with the backpacks. Oh, of course you'd knock me down. <laughs> oh, we got another backpack. Wow, okay, cool. And did we get a sword? No, no sword. So I was really hoping for a sword here, but uh, we got what we got. Go ahead and grab uh, that one there. Don't even know what I got, but uh, we made it like a bandit either way. So let's go ahead and do this. I'll actually show you one of the spawners too when you break it. So basically what happens, it doesn't always happen. It's a percent chance, mind you. Yeah, it's gonna happen right now. Does that particle effect? There you go. And there's a whole bunch of thermal mobs right there, right now, right? So yeah, that's basically what happens. And then as you go forward, the mobs get harder, I think. I know the second wave, there's like a, at least the one I did, there was like an archer that had a freezing effect on me and just messed me up. There was nothing I could do. No, anyway, I'm gonna get a little ways out of them. Maybe go through this stuff, kind of see what I got here, because I don't even know what I got. Like, I don't need that at all. There you go. Gerda sells a decent bow, that's for sure. What, what, what? Whoa, they come really far, man. Can you not do that? I'll get rid of you for sure, just for following me around. That's creepy and stuff. But yeah, the first wave isn't that bad. I might as well check if they dropped anything too. Yeah, there we go. I think we need this stuff later on. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and head through the bags. Then after I go through the bags, uh, what would I do next? Do we have a mound nearby? If we have a mound nearby, maybe I do some quick mining? Or we can check out the druid houses. We got a mound right here. Maybe we'll run up to this mound, get ourselves a set of, uh, well, at least a sort of sword. I want to get a sort of sword because we can't actually get a sword made of metal yet, right? So I want to get us a sort of sword. And once we have a sort of sword, we'll go fight the lich, I think will be the plan. So of course I got a thunderstorm in my first video, but I did go ahead and make myself a, what is there, bed? I have a bed here somewhere. Yeah, I made this here. Made myself a bed and I beat the brown sleep bag. You have these uh, big horn sheep that spawn in the twilight. You just go ahead and kill them. Once you do, you get yourself some wool, right? So pretty easy. Uh, we have to do the, there's like a quest with a whole bunch of, uh, I think you need every variety of the actual wool. And then you give it to this like questing ram. 
And I think you need that to progress at one point as well. So might as well go to the trouble of getting rid of them all. Anyway, getting that wool stored up. Checking these too, because sometimes there are chests down here. It looks like this will be one. Yeah, there'll be a hopper sometimes. There's not always a hopper. Sometimes you just see a chest down here too. And we should see a chest. There it is. If we break this, there we go. And we got ourselves some doodads and doohickeys. So let's go ahead and grab that stuff. Doesn't look like we got very much, but you know, you never know. It's a roll of the dice, right? With those uh, chests there. We did get uh, one of those charms of life there. We're actually pretty good. These things here. So this here is basically a totem of undying. So I can actually, I guess, uh, not die one time. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention too is the hoe here. This one we got from the Naga boss has the Nature Blessing 3 on it, has bone meal on it. So keep this thing around, because if you want to like grow a tree right now, you could just use this puppy, right? I don't want to waste too much of the saturation, but at the same time, I kind of want to put, show you here. Go here, uh, this one, right? So I would do that, then I grab this puppy, just pump that down, and yeah, there you go. Just like that, right? Super sweet, super awesome, and just, uh, I guess right now, I can just get myself a little more apples doing this, so free, uh, free goodies, right? Sir, one more. That broke really slow. Anyway, not that big a deal. Anyway, we got ourselves our mound over here. We grab our resources we need really quickly, which is kind of the idea. These things are super sweet. Oh, I'll have to make myself a couple more hammers here too, won't I? So let's just use this wood here. Let's do that. Get ourselves a whole bunch of sticks. There we go. And then I guess I'll need some cobblestone, hopefully. Let's grab some of that. Grab ourselves, probably only need like two hammer heads. We're not staying here very long. Like I said, I just want enough to get us a sword here. Um, might as well get a pickaxe too, because this pickaxe will be uh, diamond level. We'll actually be able to mine up the diamond level ores, so that'd be pretty useful as well, right? So anyway, kind of get it all taken care of at once. Uh, the sword, I think, is six damage, which I think I could do the boss with a um, just a regular, uh, you know, uh, stone sword. But I'd rather not do the lech with a stone sword. Just, uh, yeah, just uh, better safe than sorry, right? So there's a whole bunch of ores here. As long as you stay towards the top and don't start to... Oh, you can't break those. Uh, start digging down. You won't uh, get into like the mobs and stuff that are in the area. So we're just going to kind of stay out of that. I'm going to grab some of this coal too, actually. Oh, there's the surface right there. Give me that stuff. Give me all of that for right now. We don't need a ton. Just enough to get us going. And same thing with the coal as well. We could actually make ourselves a good amount of arrows here. They're called torch arrows, actually. And torch arrows, well, they do exactly what they sound like they do. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, grab you. Sweet. Get ourselves a stack of them, I guess. Then we should be able to pull out our quiver here. So grab that, grab a stack of arrows. I believe we just combine these together, right? Look at that, torch arrows, just like that, which is fantastic. I just throw those back in, and then we are good to go in that regards, right? So I get to shoot torches, which is fantastic. And the other thing I guess I wanted was this, right? So we just go ahead and grab this, and get ourselves a couple swords. There you go, grab two. And probably one pick. We only need the one pick here, right? So let's do that there. There you go. We are good. We're good to go. That's pretty much everything we need to probably facilitate our fight with the uh, Lich there. I do need to, I guess, free up some inventory here. So on my map here, I was looking. And we'll probably go to this one down here. Why not? Maybe, I don't know. I'm going to have to look for a home after that. But I guess we'll just go fight the boss first. Maybe we'll try, uh, check out these druid houses first, though. So maybe we'll head down here first. These can be a little nasty though, the druid houses. There's like boss traps and then the druid skeletons themselves have a ton of armor. But I'll try one or two of them anyway. We'll see how it goes. So let's go ahead and uh, check out this druid house here. So right over there. Um, this one has two floors, so it might be a little spicy. The two floor ones sometimes can be a little sketchy there because there's two spawners. So that's the thing. Also, we got a reward here. Where's it at? Down here, hex rye. And then yeah, this bronze shield. Let's grab that. I think we have some more good food too, just so we are prepared just in case, right? There you go. Yeah, these guys, there's one. If you get the um, the druid skeletons that spawn in, uh, the ones with the bows have a really nasty spell in them. So we'll kind of see how this works out. This shield hill, this is from Superior Shields. Gives us seven extra hit points that kind of recharge over time. So it's like a recharging absorption heal. Uses a little bit of durability there. See, it's going down. And uh, we're getting those little circles above our armor there. But I'm going to try to lock in these skeletons. They can still spawn outside sometimes, which is kind of annoying. But uh, I'm going to try to get it closed up. And sometimes they spawn in wolves and spider, uh, spiders as well. So something to be aware of there. So one of the chests is usually up above. So let's go check that out. Yeah, we got one right there. Uh, no, don't get out. There we go. <laughs> Can I go a little higher get that chest? Yeah, this one's easy to get. So this chest, you just kind of cheese. So let's grab you. 
Then the other one is either inside with him. I need to kind of look inside here. Uh, nope, none right there. There might be one underneath the spawner though. So let's go ahead and, oh, of course one of them spawned outside. <laughs> let's deal with this guy real quick. Yo. This uh, axe is nine damage too, I noticed, which is not too bad. Oh, me might not deal with this. <laughs> I don't have the arm to deal with that many of them. So let's go to the next one here. They'll follow you quite a ways too, which is uh, kind of annoying. But uh, yeah, I just don't want to break the spawner or deal with the, maybe I'm better off. No, there's two spawners though. I don't want to have two portals. If I only had to fight one portal, it wouldn't be too bad. Um, poor, of course, everyone we got is a two floor one too. So we always have double the spawners. Yeah, there's usually, not always, but is there, I just want to see if it's here. Is it underneath? Yeah, there's one right there. Let's see. Maybe I could do this. Then close that off. Oh, that's annoying how they put the ladder too. So yeah, you got chests down here basically is what I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> so anyway, uh, sometimes these are trapped too. So I'm definitely going to be checking that. I've killed myself in these before. Oh, we got an armor too. Cool. Let's go ahead and uh, see what we got here. Go ahead and drop that stuff off. And where's my other backpack? Just so I can fill it up. Look at that. All kinds of food, too. So, very good. These crow onks will actually be pretty good as well. We'll probably set up our first food farm, uh, farm using the Hexerai um, crows, which is not too bad. What's on this puppy here? Six armor. It's not as good as what we got. Also, I need to check. With, I was just about to open this thing. Yeah, I've definitely died to these chests before, and I'd rather not. Yeah, there's a red some torch right there. What am I even thinking? Let's just grab that instead, <laughs> because that's probably attached to it if there is a trap there. Well, let's go get ourselves flint and steel here. Did I get myself a bucket? Yeah, we got a bucket here as well. So that's good. We still have to get out of this thing, unfortunately. Didn't really think about that. I might just dig through the wall and go that way, to be honest, because I think it'd be easier than going up that ladder. So let's go straight for the boss here. We're going to just straight up pillar up. We're not going to go up the stairwell at all. Probably end up going through it at some point. Again, probably like to have a little better armor if I could. It gets a little sketchy sometimes, but it's uh, not too bad. Probably be okay, actually, with the torch arrows, to be honest. We could just light it up as we go. There is some spawners in there. And there's these uh, one kind of mob that spawns in from spawners. It might be that one there. Skeleton. Those siege breakers are nasty, actually. That one's a skeletal uh, siege breaker. They shoot uh, explody, uh, explosions at you, like explosion, exploding arrows. So they're really nasty. Then there's another one. I think it's a Forsaken Knight. Those ones are actually pretty nasty as well. So definitely don't want to mess with those ones too much. But at the same time, uh, once we get our book here with the spells, the Ars Nouveau spell book, to get the glyphs, at least early on, an easy way. Are we up at the top? Oh, okay, cool. Um, is to kill the death domes that are in here, right? So in here, we got these little red dots. That's a death dome. It'll drop glyphs, right? So you can actually unlock your spells that way until you can kind of get it the other ways. There we go. We've got ourselves a helmet here. Three armor, three max health. Oh, there's a death dome right there. We'll actually get some tomes or, yeah, some glyphs, right? Where's he at? <laughs> Go. There we go. What do we get? Dispel. I think that's a good one in this pack, actually. Fell, which we're going to get anyway, and knockback. So we didn't get the best ones here. What did we have on this? One armor, four max health. We'll take the armor. There you go. That's good. So that's cool. Uh, to unlock these two, you basically just do this, I believe. So you just go ahead and use them too. So if you haven't used them yet, it will. But apparently we already know this one because it's going to be already in our book as well. So don't have to worry about that. So to fight this guy, pretty easy. So if we dig over here, we should have a connected room. There you go. So right there, we're gonna go ahead and uh, fight him in a second, just open this up. I like having a nice little flat uh, area here. Kind of get this done. This is a good, easy way to kind of cheese him, and uh, we're gonna kind of do that, right? I know some people will use boats and stuff. Honestly, you don't need to, because everything he does is kind of limited. So basically all you have to do to fight this guy, is kind of line yourself up with him. Then when he shoots stuff at you, it's not good that it's this close. We might get exploded, actually. There you go, teleport, please. <laughs> but you just gotta sit back and you knock his pearls back at him. Oh, of course you'd come in here. But we should be able to do it right here. There you go. Notice he lost one of his uh, little bits of the bar there. And he makes two clones of himself as well. But where we only have one of these guys here, we are okay. Kind of want him to go in the other room, which is actually easier. Uh, please don't blow me up. <laughs> How can I not be uh, hitting my sword fast enough? Oh, there you go. Is that actually gonna make it to us? No, he's gonna hit the wall. Oh, this guy's being annoying. Would have been easier if he stayed in the other room. <laughs> Come on. Do your thing. There we go. And once he does this, he's going to start spawning in zombies, right? But he only spawns in a limited amount. So basically, I kill zombies. 
until we get uh, his bar turn red. <laughs> there you go. Oh, he's already turned red. That was super fast, actually. But once his bar turns red, he doesn't shoot any more projectiles. He tries to just fight you. And where we just have a sword, we just kind of lock him in a corner like this and beat him to death. So that's kind of the easy way to cheese him, too. So there you go. We beat him. And now that we've done that, we should have a, a chest out here. I'm going to close these off. Oh, of course, yeah, there was a zombie right there, too. And then there's probably another one right here. There we go. Let's make sure that's closed off. Anything in this room immediately? We do not have any sand yet, so I might as well grab that, too. So let's go ahead and grab that real quick. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and grab ourselves our spell book, right? So in here, we've got... Oh, we got a whole bunch of good stuff. We've got uh, these Charmer Lights, too. So these are, like, upgraded version of the other one. Like, if I died there, I would have came back to life. But now I'll come back with more life and, I think, regeneration as well. We've got a whole bunch of spell books as well, which is what we were coming for. Is this the one that has space in it? Yes. Let's go ahead and uh, dump some stuff here. Another trophy, which is cool. And here, a zombie specter. I think this spawns in zombies for us, but it's just like him. He has limited everything, right? So everything he does has charges. That's why he uh, didn't really do stuff for very long. There's even a phase where he heals himself, but he kind of spams it, right? That's why he was so easy. And anyway, we got our tattered spell book. With this, we should have... Which button is it? Uh, be, I can't remember. Options, controls, keybinds. Go down here, category. Go to ours. Uh, spell book. Open book. C. Okay. Let's go to C. Wait. <laughs> there we go. C. And we go to uh, set up a couple spells here, right? So we want a projectile. We have a uh, fell spell. This will be one for cutting down trees. Then you have to name it, right? We'll just call this uh, Tree Hurdy. <laughs> Sounds like a good name. Make sure it's on a slot there. Cool. We'll go to slot two. Then we'll do projectile crush. I think that would crush down ores. I'll have to try it out here. I know we need sensitive if it's dust. They so kind of like do uh, dust as well. But uh, yeah, for the actual blocks, I think this would work on. So we'll call this uh, block uh, breaky, I guess. We'll try that. Cool. Name that one. And then what else we got here? We unlocked the dispel one. We'll worry about that later. We'll do harm. Let's do a projectile harm. And with that, we could just do uh, mob hurdy, right? Let's do that right there. Make sure it's on three. Create that spell. And then you should be able to uh, set a wheel, kind of set up like this. I think I set mine already. It's V, right? So I could just do the uh, tree cutting spell just by right clicking now. I could change my spells. So that's effectively all I wanted from here. That was my main goal for today. To actually get these things done so we can go cut down trees. I'm going to show you how easy it is to cut down trees with this thing too. This is actually, yeah, it's a big benefit. It made our life a lot easier. Did I find a boat at any point? Sometimes you find boats. If I found a boat, uh, where would I be? I'm probably saying boat funny too because I'm Canadian. Anyway, <laughs> that's a leg. Uh, yeah, I don't want to die. There we go. We just fall down, which is fantastic, and we're good. And then I realized after I made the boat that we had a bucket of water anyway, and I uh, could have done it that way. Although I usually kill myself when I do that. Also, I found a book in there. So in there, right below that room that we're standing on where we're fighting the lich, there was actually a bunch of bookcases. I think that's where the death tomes actually spawn. It's over the uh, library areas inside these, right? So I had another one spawn in, and then I was just like, hey, bookcases. But now we have this here. This is the centric tome, and this is the one with all the books in it, right? So we have access to all those books, which is pretty cool. So I could pick a worn notebook. I could read about Ars Nouveau. Then I think it's open hand. Yeah, left click, open hand, and go back to the regular book. And then I think you can hit Q to throw the books out. Is that still a thing? Maybe you can't throw the books out anymore. Or maybe there's a new way of doing it. Or maybe you have to do this first. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> not sure how it works anymore. I thought it was Shift Q. Oh, yeah, Shift Q. There you go. So you just Shift Q it and you get to throw out the individual book as well. So we have access to all the books here, which is fantastic. And uh, we got a spell book. Also, our spell book. Which one did I set up? Was it this one? I need to make sure I have the right book here. Yeah, this one, right? So let's try this on some trees. So now we can just cut down trees, no problem. Even a big one like this shouldn't be too big of trouble at all. We can't uh, cut down the er everything at once. But we kind of spam the spell a little bit, uh, but not a ton. Also, those cicadas, there's like little bugs on the trees that act as lights. But they also make a bunch of sound. <laughs> you actually need some of them for crafting. But yeah, you get immense amounts of wood very, very quickly. So not bad at all, right? So that was kind of my main reason for wanting this so quickly. It just makes our life so much easier. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, find us one of those big mounds. And then we'll probably start working towards actually... Getting maybe a furnace? Sounds like a good, uh, good idea, right? Maybe a little progress?
So I found myself one of the large mounds, so that's it here. I'll dig into this and dig it out and hollow it out at some point, probably. But uh, we'll get to that in time. On the map, it was not too far away. Just kind of came across here. See one of the enchanted forests down here, too? One of those uh, questing rams should be down here. So it's actually not a bad area to uh, be in. Did go ahead and organize all of our materials. So we're actually fairly organized right now. Don't have connected inventory to any, any uh, of any kind right now, unfortunately. Also, these backpacks, you can pick them up and put them down. Got one from a zombie too when I was mining a little bit. So I went down into this little cave here because so I need some dye, right? And I uh, have that now, so we're pretty good. Also, I got us some live root. So live root, I should mention that real quick because it's gotten a little weird. Go to, oh, go to one of these trees here. Go ahead and uh, cut down this puppy and break this. Then you'll have these roots down here. And every once in a while, you'll see like a yellow one. I don't know if we'll see one here. But anyway, every once in a while, you'll see a different one, right? So it'd be like a, like a yellowish one. That one will actually drop a live root. There's a way to automatically farm them, but uh, for right now, we cannot. But we are going to need them for iron later on the pack, so we are going to have to get them fully automated. So right now, it's uh, very limited on how you get iron, right? So the main thing I want to do right now is get us a smelting right. So we could accept a quest right here, this ore infusion. I think that's for nature's ore, though. So I'm going to wait until later to accept that, because I think it like boosts the aura in the area. Over here, we've got a Farmer's Delight reward. What is this one here? Sorcerer's Delight? Oh, it looks like it was a book. What did we get here? Capacity three. What is temptation? Entices nearby farm animals. Oh, probably a breeding one. So that's cool. Capacity is useful either way. Anyway, that is cool. So the way we're going to get to actual smelting, and I guess uh, breaking down resources, you have to use a mortar and pestle. So we have to go ahead and make this here. We can use naga stone here as well. So I think I have pretty much everything we need. Uh, let's grab that there. There you go. Can I make a couple of those? I'd like to make like three. Let's start with like three. And the furnaces, um, what do we need here? Oh, I need to make a bunch of, uh, I guess, andesite first, right? That's why I went ahead and got the uh, door right there. So that's good. Then we'll make some polished. We'll have to make a stone cutter at some point too, but I see it needs a uh, smelted down stone. So you need a furnace first anyway. So I guess that's the thing. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab like three furnaces to start. Throw one of these down. Probably two of them down. Actually, let's put like three of them down right now. Just to show you how they work here. Uh, where's it at? Let's grab. We can't do iron. Iron cannot be processed here. Iron's going to be later on. Like I said, iron's a thing in this pack, right? So where's it at? I think it has to be done with this here. Then you take that raw iron wood. Then you finally get this iron wood again. And then you finally change that somehow into iron, I think. I can't remember where. I don't know. There's iron. We'll, we'll find iron later on. We're not worried about that. But the regular resources, right? Go ahead and uh, grab ourselves some tin. Let's do... I think you're doing like batches of five. Let's do copper. There you go. And we'll do some silver. There you go. Just to get us a little bit of resources going. I think the tin is going to be one of the main ones early on anyway. But yeah, just go ahead and yeah, put all five in. Just like this. And thus there. And that grinds it down to dust. It kind of does a ore doubling by default in these things, but they too, do take a little bit of time, right? Let's go ahead and grab some furnaces here too. So we take one here and we'll grab a whole bunch of wood. We got a ton of wood now, so we can smelt for days. I need to smelt down some regular cobblestone. I don't think I actually have much left. I need some smooth stone basically, just to get us a blast furnace because we can't even smelt down what we get out of these in that. So I guess that's the thing as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out here. This is the actual crushed silver ore. Then you take that and you blast it, and then you finally get your resources, right? So I guess we'll be able to do the, the bulk blasting later on with great, but for right now, this, this is this is what we're doing. <laughs> so definitely the thing. Uh, we've got our stone here. I guess I only need two to kind of get us started, so let's get that done. I think it'd be pretty easy to automate this process too. So if we actually start that, how would I do that? I guess we'd have it feeding into a chest. I'll just feed into this chest for right now. Go ahead and get you out of there. I have some hoppers here that I got from the bottom of the wells, mind you. Uh, but we can make these, I believe, now that we have 10. Yeah, we just actually make those with 10 now, so that's not too bad. So we got two of those. Let's see if we can actually make a blast furnace. Fantastic. We've got one of them. Did that finish off that quest? Yeah, we get one of these two, these uh, extraneous fire starters. They're actually really useful, too. It actually automatically power the blast furnace for us. It's from Nature's Aura. And I think it uses a little bit of ore in the chunk, but we can't even see the ore right now. But that should do automatic smelting. So if I went ahead and grabbed, I guess, the tin ore and threw that in there, that'll just end up in the chest there. But if I wanted to automate, I guess, this process, all I'd really have to do is this here. Grab ourselves a mortar pestle, right? 
then probably another hopper on top. It's a little jank way of doing it, but anyway, let's go ahead do this. That there, probably figure out a slightly more compact way. Although it doesn't matter, I'll be able to reach the top anyway. Let's just use the hopper right now. There you go. And then we can just feed that, right? So it'll get through that 12. And then, yeah, we'll just do that to that to that. So that should work fine. Do I have five of anything? I just want to make sure it's working here. Yeah, let's do five gold as well. So let's go grab you. Go ahead and drop you off. I just want to make sure that actually gets into this hopper and then it's done. And that should all went in there, right? We have some ingots? Wait, I smelt the things. <laughs> Where'd it go? Wait, didn't I put stuff in here? Am I crazy? 12, 12. Yeah, I smelted stuff, right? Oh, we got clumps now. What do you do with clumps? Wait, there's another step? <laughs> Is there another step? No, there can't be. Where am I at? I just did this here. And that smelts that down. In the gold clumps. Okay, so we're doing like ore doubling. Okay, I missed this step completely. So how do we actually get this into ore? Wait, wait, what? Do we have to put that through these again? And then you get dust? Oh my goodness, that's even more work than I thought. So from there, okay, now I get this. Let's see, do this. You'd put like five in here, and five in here, and then you can finally smelt that off. Okay, so that's gonna be quite the chain just for smelting. Okay, that, that's actually crazy. That's actually nuts. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be finished here, I just assumed. Yeah, so you get these clumps, and then you turn that into dust. That's with the crush glyph, but you need sensitive to be able to do this step. You'd be able to automate this, I guess, later on with uh, a spell turret. Spell turret, yeah, but you need the uh, sensitive glyph to do that, I think. And then, yeah, just smelt that down in blasting, so it has to be a blast furnace. So in theory, I should be able to take this down. Actually smelts off pretty quickly, thankfully. But yeah, that's cool. But that's a doubling uh, process right there, right? Because we put in five and we get out 12, is it? Yeah, we get 12, so it's like 2.2. .2. So that's actually pretty neat all around. So take that. I actually want eight of these two. I think we'd go ahead and actually upgrade one of these unless that's been changed. I don't like assuming any recipe has been changed in this pack because everything has been changed uh, completely. But I should be able to get us a slightly bigger backpack here, right? At least for our one main one. Look at that, we got ourselves a bigger backpack. Got ourselves more space. And that's fantastic. And that is the start of uh, Ignomatica 9 Expert. So <laughs> that is where we're at. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Going to enjoy this a lot moving forward. But I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up here. So as always, if you guys like this video, go ahead and uh, hit that like button. Really liked it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.